Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. say I'm not shocked because understanding human behavior, social engineering and uh, propaganda and everything, understanding how it works and how it moves, what I'm seeing I predict it, but still when you predict something that you know is detrimental to your people, as you see it start to manifest, you still are disappointed, you are hurt, you're frustrated, um, and I'm watching this unfold and I've been talking about it for damn near 20 plus years and and I'm 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 frustrated and disappointed because it's happening but I'm also frustrated and disappointed at the level of casual acceptance or docile and compliance docility and compliance that is accompanying it um, let's just get to it the NAACP Image Awards I'm not an NAACP fan I understand the history of the NAACP so I, I understand its purposes and intents and origins so uh, it's not something that I am um, you know it, 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 you know, it's something that everybody gets excited about when you understand the history and how everything has been used. Very few things that get glossed and, and shoved back at us as something that has been a beacon for black people has normally been uh, a muse or some form of distraction. Uh, it's just simply the way the things that really empower black people get no traction. It just simply does not happen. It doesn't happen in any of the programs that you're looking at that empower young black children, educational programs that's done and funded and pushed primarily by black men, black women who are sacrificing their time, energy, effort, resources, and time. What I'm talking about is the NAACP Image Awards uh, gave Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Union uh, their presidential award for gallant philanthropy in the area of promoting the LGBTQ uh, agenda uh, and using Dwayne's son, Gabrielle's stepson, um, basically as a platform. Uh, I have been talking about the over objectification and sexualization of young children for a while. It's not new, but the agenda that's being pushed, if we aren't careful, the very thing that R. Kelly just got, what was it? 20 years, I think, for the very thing he just got 20 years for will be completely okay and legal in another 15. There's an agenda on deck. And the LGBTQ community is either wittingly or unwittingly B 
being used as a vehicle to push this sexual deviancy. Uh, while I've been very vocal about my position when it comes to uh, homosexuality in specific, um, I haven't really had a lot to say about transgenderism. That's a choice. When you're an adult, you make a choice. That's your choice. Uh, my issue with homosexuality is we can't afford to lose men. And we can't afford to lose the ability to procreate. That's a primary function of homosexuality. So I've spoke on that. But I love my people regardless. I have no hatred and I have no fear. I'm not a foe. Uh, I work in the field where phobias are actually a technical and specified term of irrational fear. I have no fear of my gay brothers and sisters, my trans brothers and sisters, my queer brothers and sisters, and all the mother alphabets. I have no fear. I have no hatred. I love you. I'll sit down and talk to you. I have friends. I have relatives, close relatives, that are a part of that community that I love with the dearest heart and will go to the mat for. So that isn't about that. But I'm going to stand on my belief that it's not the best thing for us. I'm going to stand on that. But that's this isn't what this is about. This is about allowing children who haven't even come close to developing mentally, emotionally, psychologically to make lifetime decisions, life impacting decisions, decisions that are going to impact them. Now, the thing is, the science doesn't lie. You know, I, 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 I'm not here to judge anybody who makes a choice. That's not why I'm here. Why I'm here is understand the implications of the choice. When you're an adult and you decide you want to choose a lifestyle where the rate of depression, the rate of suicide is higher than the average, meaning that there's a lot of stress and a lot of darkness that goes along with this outside of it. And a lot of it comes from hatred. A lot of it comes from hatred. A lot of it comes from ignorance. A lot of it comes from an unwillingness to, 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 to be flexible and love people. I'm about love. I don't have to agree with you to love you, but you're not going to force me down your lane. Now, if you, you can accept my love and we can love each other and we don't have to have those conversations. Why are we so heavily involved in discussing sexual orientation? Why is it my business what you're doing in your bedroom? You know, nobody knows what I'm doing in my bedroom. And I think that's the way it should be. The idea that we need to be out front and just bold about what's going on in our bedroom is a problem. The bigger problem is the fact that we are now bringing our children into it. You go to a great pride parade. There are a lot of things going on there that definitely is rated, rated at least... X minus, you know, body parts that shouldn't be shown and definitely not in front of children are out there. A lot of suggest sexually suggestive material and outfits and all this stuff like that. And yet there are children out there of all ages. And my thing is, if that's who you are, you shouldn't be, you should never be claiming something you're ashamed of. So you shouldn't be ashamed of it. You should walk boldly in it. But I walk boldly in my heterosexuality. My, none of my kids are familiar with anything about how I feel or how I move or anything I do. Say. That's not for them to be a part of. Now, when it's time for me to talk to them about sexual maturity and maturing and moving into that, we have those conversations. But to have my four, five, six, seven year old into this, to have my 11 or 12 year old already determining that they are going to identify as something other than what they are assigned at birth is too early. The opportunity to make that decision seven years after that, six years, if you're 12, six years after that, you make that decision, it's it's your decision to make. I still think that's a young, 18 is a little young. Your still, brain still developing at 18. You know, all of that. But what I can't see is what I see with Gabrielle Union and Dwayne Wade. You know, Dwayne Wade is questionable. And the thing is, be who you are, say who you are, and walk in it. Don't hide behind and live vicariously through your child. 
more importantly, stop using the child as a platform to maintain spotlight and relevance. And I'm talking specifically and especially to Gabrielle Union. You know, stop using this kid as a means of being relevant. You are fighting for rights because of this kid. This kid deserves to be a freaking kid. Not some championed idea or notion. There's plenty of time for that. Whatever this child wants to be, there will be a world that will say it's okay, obviously. But to push it in a time when the mind is still highly pliable. In other words, the things you put in front of a kid consistently will sculpt their perspective and view. So if you're constantly pushing it, it's going to become a part of their uh, mental, emotional dynamic, and they will probably gravitate towards it. Uh, the truth of the matter is, science tells me that um, it's not uncommon to have some concerns or lack of clarity or confusion about gender assignment, sexual orientation. It's not uncommon. It happens. But what it, science also tells me, if the child is left alone, and there are no influences from either side. The you, I ain't having none of that homosexual gay shit in my house. None of that. And none of the gay is where it's at shit. How about just be a kid? It'll come to you. And what we find though is when that happens, when there are no influences from either side, 80 plus percent of those who are gender confused or sexually confused end up identifying with our natural assignment says a lot says that what we're seeing is a lot of influences on people that are giving a predicted or predictable outcome my problem again is these children are too young to be in the middle of this push and what i think is happening in the sense of fighting for someone's right to choose is the argument is bleeding into the argument about sexual deviancy, ephebophilia, pedophilia, and the right for adults to have sex with children. Because when you talk about sexual orientation of a 10 year old who's identifying, you're already introducing them into the discussion of their sexuality. Now that they're in this discussion, you're starting to openly put them in a vein where you're now arguing about something that, that, that adults have an issue with, but you're using children to do it and you're objectifying them. When there is no direct connectivity, emotional connectivity, spiritual connectivity accompanied with sexual arousal and sexual attraction, it becomes objectification. It's simply a physical thing and it's objectified. It has to have the components of love, spiritual connectivity, emotional connectivity, and a sense and a desire to be benevolent and caring towards the other person. Now, sex becomes something special. And it's beyond the objectification. It is simply one expressive way of being able to communicate. How in the hell do you expect someone 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 to know that? Hell, ephebophilia. Ephebophiles are those who are attracted to post pubescent adolescents. So they have actually started developing. They have the body parts and the build and the look of a young adult, but they're still adolescent. That's an feeble file. What does a 15-year-old know about this shit? Shit, I'm 55 and I'm still learning. And I've probably you know reluctantly admit I probably have, not probably definitely had way more engagement and experience especially during my time um, never mind. But <laughs> I'm still learning. It's not about how many times and how many people. It's about a maturity process. It's about wanting to be the best you can be. It's about wanting to have that type of experience. When you keep objectifying stuff that wasn't meant to be objectified, you kill the soul of it. 
And when you kill the soul of it, it just becomes an instrument of devastation because now you got people incapable of loving procreating. Or you put you push something so heavily, a child moves into something uh, prematurely, gets into it, cannot have handle the pressure of what it what comes with it, and ends up killing themselves. We have a situation where young girls five ages five to thirteen, young black girls ages five to thirteen, lead the statistical category for suicide for their age group. Used to be said. Blacks don't kill themselves. That shit's out the window now. 30% increase over the last five years across the board, regardless of age, regardless of uh, gender. 30% increase. Black men are killing themselves at a higher rate too. Especially young black men. And nobody's asking why. We don't ask why. We just look at the stuff and go, oh my God, how horrible. Oh my God, they, they you know, that was a coward's way out. Oh my God. And we're not asking why. Oh, these kids are soft. When I was growing up, we had bullies. Yeah, you had bullies. But when you had a bully, you went to school. You just had to avoid the bully for six hours, seven hours tops. You went home. You was in the safety of your home. Bully wasn't coming to your home messing with you because mom and dad was there. Sisters and brothers were there. Now social media. You got Instagram and TikTok. Bully follows you home. Bully goes to get more people that don't even go to your school to get on their, on their bandwagon and attack you and call you all types of names and, and tear you down and attack your self-esteem. And now the, 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 the builders of your self-esteem aren't as engaged with you as, as our parents were. Our parents were constantly engaged. We spent more time talking to our parents. There was no social media. We were engaged. Our parents were asking us questions about what happened at school. Our parents were asking us about our homework. Our parents were asking us about what we were going to do with ourselves. It was more engaged. And our parents were encouraging us. Our parents were speaking into us. Our parents were telling us. As a matter of fact, our parents were demanding, you're going to be more than I was. And so that was this expectation and this excitement that I'm going to grow up and do something. Now... The bully follows you home on your device. And nobody's talking about that. Studies have shown that Instagram is exceptionally dangerous for teenage girls. Facebook has this information. No major steps to this point have been taken. I've been talking about it and we don't talk. But here's what I can tell you. There is a push. There has literally been legislature pushed in where they are trying to uh, lighten legislation and statutes that govern pedophilia. They are slowly moving and pushing. They haven't had any major victories yet, but the idea that you can have someone openly uh, lobbying for it and not be ostracized by society is a problem. I see anybody lobbying for pedophilia, I probably better not catch you alone where nobody knows what I'm doing. That's how I feel about it. I think pedophiles need to be put down. Anybody that preys on a freaking child should be put down. But what are we defining as predatory? Is it just the physical act or is it laying the foundation for children to be exploited? Is it the exploitation of children? For the sake of our own benefit. All of that's predatory to me. It may not be sexually predatory, but it's predatory. When do we stop freaking protecting the children and start exploiting them? They give a freaking reward, not reward, a freaking award to them for parading that young kid up and down across social media and everywhere else exposing that kid isn't ready for what's coming at him yes and I said him kiss my ass that kid isn't ready my thing is there will come a time when that kid will be ready one way or the other it's not my choice to make it's not theirs either it's his he's not old enough to make it yet but you get behind it and you just, now the name is legally changed. At 13, 13, 14 now, it's been, this has been going on since he's like 10, 11. Openly that I'm aware of. I don't know how long before that. 
I'm from what I understand, he's always had that 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 you know uh, presentation, and it's it's that isn't anything new. You you can in many instances watch kids and very early on tell okay he's presenting feminine. You know she's a little rough. Sometimes it pans out. Sometimes it actually just rolls out exactly how it's looking. That's called life. You don't beat it out of them. You don't beat it in them. You love them. But you don't push agendas that they're not ready to deal with. And the fact that we're sitting around and some of us are actually celebrating this shit. is absolutely ridiculous. That kid will have time. The fact that teachers are being fired because they refuse to address kids by their all of a sudden gender identification. Hell, I'm not switching every goddamn time you change your mind. I mean, teachers are being forced. And, and here's the problem with that. While I don't have a right to impede upon your freedoms, when you force me to accept your philosophy, to accept your particular presentation you're impeding upon mine and nobody seems to see that do you but you can't make me play with that i'm gonna love you i'm gonna care about you i will come to bat for you anybody mishandles you because nobody has a right to mishandle you nobody has a right to harm you i'm coming to bat for you for that shit but me sitting up telling you you know I'm gonna go long and I'm, I'm riding hard in the paint with however you wanna do it, I'm gonna, no. I'm gonna stand strong on my convictions. That's what makes me a man. That's what gives me gives my character integrity. I can do that out of love. I can, I can say I don't agree with it and still love you. But what I'm not gonna do is sit up and say it's okay for kids to be making life impacting decisions. That's why you have parents so that you don't go off making th decisions on things you may never outgrow or overcome. We've got to get back to parenting. We've got to get back to being protectors of our homes and our communities, protectors of our children, protectors of our women. We have become way too casual with just letting shit go for the sake of it ain't my business. It ain't my business does not work in a social construct. Check any other species and everybody has responsibilities and held accountable, held accountable to the social construct of that species. Violate that, your ass is grass. Lions kill lions. Um, every, every species, you violate it, there's a problem. There's a social, we are social construct. We are mammals, by nature social. We weren't meant to operate everybody on their own code. We were meant to collaborate. And because we operate in enclaves where one group is trying to move another group out of the way, we have to, we have to operate within the construct and codes that protect that group. In this case, blackness. We've got work to do. Look, I'm gonna get out of here. I wasn't even planning on being this long. But I needed to uh, address that. And, you know, I'm probably going to get a lot of heat. Again, you know, somebody's going to interpret what I'm saying as hatred. No hatred here. This is about letting kids be kids. It's real simple to me. Stop exploiting children. You want There's a whole bunch of adults that you can go fight for. The right for them to choose and be who they want to be. Whatever that is. And do that. Let children be children. Defend the right for children just to be kids. That's way too heavy to be trying to carry at 12 and 13 years old. Come on. <sighs> All right. Look, that's it for me now. Let me get off of here. Uh, but that's my challenge to you. And as I said before, if you believe in the work that we're doing at the Odyssey Project, go in the description box, click the link, and give or give through the organization's cash app account. All that information is in the description box. On that note, I'm